In the opening scenes of the movie, we are introduced to Heather, a teenager whose recent rebellious streak has left her parents, Alice and Joe, at their patience's end. In an attempt to curb her defiance, they make the decision to enroll her at Fallburn Academy, an isolated boarding school surrounded by a dense forest. Upon their arrival, the mysterious headmistress, Miss Travers, greets the family, and although Heather refuses to engage, Miss Travers leads them on a brief tour to show them the Academy's grounds. Sometime afterward, Heather's departure from her parents is filled with a mix of anxiety and sadness as she watches them leave. On the same day, Miss Mackinac, one of the teachers, escorts Heather to the dining hall where she instantly becomes the subject of hushed conversations among the students. The girls are also abuzz with speculation about the whereabouts of another student named Anna. Amidst the whispers, Heather is introduced to Marcy, a friendly face in the crowd. Their budding friendship is soon interrupted by Samantha, a girl with a mean streak who takes an immediate dislike to Heather. Despite Samantha's attempt to belittle her, Heather's quick wit turns the tables. The encounter ends with Samantha, in a display of utter meanness, spilling milk on Marcy. Later that night, Heather tries to settle into the dormitory. The next day's light brings with it more questions as Heather inquires about a mysteriously unoccupied bed, which Marcy solemnly reveals belonged to Anna, who had tragically stained the classroom with blood in an attempt on her life, resulting in her hospitalization. As dusk falls on Fallburn Academy, the students gather in hushed tones, sharing the dark tale of Clara and her two sisters, spiritual figures who mysteriously emerged from the depths of the woods nearly a century prior, only to enroll at the very school where our story unfolds. These sisters were oddities, often seen staring into the trees, listening to voices inaudible to everyone else. With time, the trio was discovered engaging in a weird ritual within the school's walls, branding them witches in the eyes of their terrified peers. The harassment that ensued was relentless, driving Clara to beg the woods for vengeance against their tormentors. In a chilling pact, she pledged the souls of the students in exchange for retribution. Not long after, the sisters were chased into the forest by the girls, only to return under mysterious circumstances, with Clara in command as if the girls were under a supernatural control. The night ended in horror as they witnessed Clara dismembering the headmistress, with the children proclaiming pride in her deed and even partaking in it before casting the headmistress's remains into the well. The tale of Clara's nocturnal wanderings in the woods persisted among the students, fostering a lingering dread that her spirit was still residing in the woods. Heather starts to experience her own share of haunting phenomena, with voices intruding upon her thoughts, eerily commanding her to harm her own mother. Miss Travers observes Heather with a peculiar interest as she teeters precariously on a chair, lost to the whispers that only she can hear. When Heather emerges from the trance, confused and alarmed, she seeks answers from the headmistress, who deftly sidesteps the inquiry with a hollow apology that does little to ease Heather's mounting unease. The school's atmosphere thickens with tension as Anna, the student whose absence was marked by bloodshed and mystery, returns to Fallburn Academy. Heather, driven by a blend of concern and curiosity, questions Marcy about Anna's well-being and whether she has witnessed any of the strangeness that seems to pervade the school. Their conversation is abruptly cut short by Samantha. A confrontation between Samantha and Heather escalates quickly, resulting in Heather's bold defiance as she strikes Samantha, leading to a physical altercation that is swiftly interrupted by the faculty. That evening, Heather approaches Anna's bedside to introduce herself. She quietly takes note of the bandaged wrist peeking out from under Anna's sleeve but decides to stay silent on the matter. In a hushed, desperate tone, Anna confides in Heather, claiming they are both special like their friend Marcy. Tears streak Anna's face as she whispers a haunting anticipation. All of them are in danger unless they yield to the demands of an ominous, they. Heather's mind races with questions about who they could be. In the midst of their conversation, a chill creeps into the room. Heather, reacting to Anna's shivers, climbs onto a nearby trunk to close the window. But as she does, an eerie fog begins to seep in, and tendrils of vine ensnare the trunk, toppling it and sending Heather crashing to the ground, her ankle breaking with pain. The commotion summons the teachers. While one assists Anna, another ushers Heather to the infirmary. 
Come morning, Heather wakes with her ankle swollen and bruised. She hobbles back to the dormitory, offering Marcy an apology for the previous night's disturbance. Marcy, however, seems bewildered, claiming no knowledge of any commotion. With the other girls off to breakfast, Heather's heart sinks as she discovers Anna's bed, now a morbid nest of dead leaves in the girl's absence. Later, a grave silence falls over the assembly as Miss Travers informs everyone of Anna's disappearance. The headmistress reassures the students that the authorities have been notified and stresses the importance of safety, a stark reminder of the dangers that seem to lurk around them. Heather's day takes another turn when Samantha corners her, insisting they need to talk. Soon after, Heather witnesses the sheriff arrive with Anna's necklace, an item supposedly retrieved from the hospital. Confusion sets in as she overhears Miss Travers fabricate a story to the sheriff, claiming Anna is still within the safety of the academy. Eager to share this unsettling discovery, Heather finds Marcy, who is strangely dismissive, and insists that Anna is fine, ending the conversation with a terse plea for solitude. In a solitary act of frustration, Heather goes through Marcy's possessions and, in a moment of anger, dismantles her Walkman. The destruction is precise, each piece deliberately placed on the chest like a strange scene. Miss Travers walks in just in time to witness the aftermath, including Heather's fainting spell that leaves her with an injured ankle. Time passes, and the students find themselves constantly nudged by the staff to consume their milk, a normal act that hides a sinister intent, as the milk is not what it seems. The staff moves Marcy to Anna's former bed, and as if following a twisted script, the room again fills with a creeping fog and slithering vines. Heather, driven by a need to uncover the truth, attempts to probe deeper into the night's mysteries. Yet, just as she nears a possible revelation, a disembodied voice slices through the fog, its command to sleep taking her strength until she collapses into unconsciousness. As dawn breaks, Heather is met with an unsettling sight. Marcy's bed is now barren, covered only in a blanket of dry leaves, mirroring Anna's mysterious disappearance. Distressed, Heather seeks solidarity from her roommates, but they are unaware of the strange occurrences. Their lack of concern only heightens her anxiety. Miss McKenna enters, interrupting the mounting tension, and offers Heather a sliver of hope, promising that they will find Marcy. The day wears on, and Heather cannot shake her concern for Marcy. She ventures into the woods, determined to uncover any clue that might lead to her friend. In the dense thicket, Samantha appears, startling Heather. She speaks urgently, tired of repeating her warnings about the lurking danger of the teachers. Samantha reveals her efforts to protect Heather by contacting her father, urging him to take Heather home before she becomes another target. The teachers, according to Samantha, select their victims through scholarship exams. She imparts a chilling revelation. Heather is pivotal to the liberation of the souls trapped within the woods. Samantha has more to say, but their meeting is cut short by Miss Leland's arrival. With a hushed tone laced with urgency, Samantha implores Heather to avoid the milk, then she is led away by the teacher. The relative calm of the afternoon is shattered by a horrifying discovery. Samantha's lifeless body is found suspended from the dining hall ceiling. An immediate and heavy silence grips the school. Miss Travers confronts Heather with heavy eyes, inquiring what Samantha might have disclosed to her. Heather responds with her own accusation, asserting her knowledge of the students' abductions. Miss Travers deflects, labeling Samantha as misguided and reassuring Heather that Anna and Marcy had merely fled and would soon return. Heather, steadfast and unyielding, declares her sanity to the headmistress, affirming her ability to see and hear the unexplainable. Miss Travers concedes, not with doubt but with a strange affirmation of Heather's special nature. In the wake of the tragedy, the sheriff arrives seeking answers about Samantha's demise. Heather seizes the moment to voice her concerns about Anna and Marcy, stirring the sheriff's frustration over the headmistress's omissions. Faced with mounting pressure, Miss Travers relents, informing the sheriff of the other disappearances post-Samantha's death, framing her silence as a means to spare him further distress. Miss McKenna quickly escorts Heather away, while Miss Travers instructs Miss Leland to lead the sheriff into the woods, the alleged site of the girl's last known whereabouts. Tragically, the search ends in violence as the woods claim another victim, 
the sheriff, extinguishing the hope of finding the missing students and covering Fallburn Academy in deeper mystery. While the school is steeped in mystery and quiet horror, Heather stumbles upon Marcy and Samantha's examination papers, a sinister sign as she recalls they too had completed the scholarship test. This discovery lingers in her mind, but before she can delve deeper, her parents arrive to take her home, challenging Miss Travers's objections. Their departure, however, is ill-fated. The horrific vines that haunt the woods lash out at them. In the ensuing chaos, Heather is rendered unconscious by the violent intrusion of nature. In the midst of the chaos, Joe desperately attempts to save Alice from the clutches of the malevolent vines, which are dragging her from their car. In her frenzied struggle, Alice accidentally strikes Joe, knocking him out cold. A groggy Heather comes too, only to witness her mother collapsing to the ground before darkness consumes her once more. Dawn brings no comfort as Heather awakens in the sterile confines of a hospital room. She frantically searches for her parents, her heart sinking as she finds her father alone, consumed in silence and grief. The terrible truth crashes down on her. Her mother is gone. Overcome with sorrow, Heather breaks down in tears. Amidst her grief, Miss Travers reappears, commanding Heather to be taken away and tied down. She approaches Joe with a tale of incomplete examinations and accidents, all the while slicing her hand open to reveal black blood. Without hesitation, she forces Joe to drink from her wound. His resistance fades as the dark blood flows into him, and in a separate room, doctors subdue Heather with medication. When consciousness returns, Heather finds herself once again within the walls of the mysterious academy. That evening, she dutifully drinks her milk, only to be told she's been relocated to Anna's bed, the very bed that had become a silent witness to unspeakable events. Restlessness grips her, sleep eludes her. In the dead of night, nausea overtakes her, and she discovers to her horror black blood mingled in her milk, a dry leaf emerging from her mouth. Instinct propels her to flee. She fashions a makeshift escape through the window, using her bed as leverage. The relentless vines surge to trap her, but she narrowly evades their grasp and flees. Terror drives Heather to barricade herself in the restroom, arming herself with a shard of broken glass. Yet, even here, she is not safe. The vines snake their way through the window, reaching for her. Meanwhile, in the stark white of the hospital room, Joe purges the black substance from his body, a twig falling from his lips as he comes back to his senses. Seizing the moment of clarity, he hastily steals a car from the hospital and takes flight. Back at Fallburn Academy, Heather finds herself trapped by sinuous vines. As her vision clears, she sees Marcy and Anna trapped alongside her, their fates uncertain. Unbeknownst to Heather, these creeping vines have been slowly claiming her schoolmates, a silent terror that has gone unnoticed until now. With a chilling revelation, she realizes that the spirits of Claire and her sisters have taken residence within Miss Traverse and the other teachers, an unsettling possession that haunts the school's halls. As an eerie ritual commences, orchestrated by Miss Traverse, Marcy is compelled to sing a haunting melody, a song steeped in tradition and darkness. Heather is tasked with an ancient practice of balancing hefty stones, a role she fulfills unaware that her father, Joe, is desperately attempting to penetrate the school's imposing defenses. Miss Travers calls upon the souls dwelling within the woods, seeking to bind them to the young girls as new vessels. Unseen, Joe makes his way into the heart of the academy, armed with an axe, a father's determination fueling his every move. His presence undetected, he strikes at one of the vine-bound teachers. The vines rise in defense, lashing out at him. Yet, this violent display only serves to spur Heather on, who seizes her father's weapon and delivers a fierce blow to another captor, freeing herself. Heather then faces her possessed educators with grim resolve, ending their reign of terror. To her horror and revulsion, mud, not blood, flows from their wounds, a testament to the unnatural life within them. In a final confrontation, Miss Travers, consumed by malevolence, lunges at Heather from the shadows. With fierce determination, Heather repels the attack, dealing decisive, brutal blows to the headmistress. With the dark heart of the academy vanquished, the sinister vines relinquish their hold, retreating back to the forest from which they sprang. 
In the aftermath, the once oppressive institution is consumed by flames. Yet, as the Academy submits to the fire, the surrounding woods stand eerily intact, unscathed by the flames. The haunting implication that the spirit may yet endure hangs in the air as the movie draws to its mysterious end. Did this story spook you out? Let us know in the comments below. For more horror movie recaps, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you in the next one. Fear awaits you.